attention to planning and the doing of worship is what I call vesting the church. How can we make it easy for parishioners and visitors to enter fully into the act of worship? It all begins off campus, probably with our web pages or on Facebook. Our service times, the first thing people see is our address, the directions and contact info easily available. And then when you get towards the campus, if you're driving or walking by, is the Episcopal Church welcomes you sign a couple of blocks away? Does signage indicate who you are and when to come to church? And does it, uh, does it indicate your level of welcome? For instance, is there a rainbow flag or the phrase, se habla espanol? All of this helps to tell people that you're there for them. And as people actually arrive on Sunday, are they greeted personally? I know a congregation where it's virtually impossible to pass by it on Sunday morning without being greeted by the rector and others standing on the sidewalk, flashing their smiles with a generous good morning to everyone, whether they are coming to church or jogging or walking the dog. Once again, on the campus, is there adequate signage pointing people to the worship space? Is there clearly marked access for those who are differently abled? Once inside the church, is there a clear indication of restrooms, childcare, and the nave itself? As one enters the worship space, a well-laid-out bulletin is most helpful. It might or might not contain every single word or hymn or song in it, or it might indicate just page numbers to, that you might follow. Keep it user-friendly. For example, in one bulletin you might read, opening hymn 410, and then there's no mention of the first line, and then in italics, lauda anima, the name of the tune. That happens in more churches than I can count, and I think it confuses anyone who's a visitor. We already worship a mystery. We don't need to add more. Remember that on any given Sunday, there might be a visitor who has never even been in a church. Taking a look at your space. Look at your surroundings. Sit in the chairs or the pews in many different locations. And from all those positions, Ask yourself, will people see and hear clearly? Is there easy access in and out of pews or chairs and wide aisles for wheelchairs? Is there a soft space for children? And I don't mean at the back of the church. Take them and put them right in the very, in front of the first pew. Kids need to see and hear what's going on because the liturgy itself is an excellent teacher, better than any Sunday school. Is the presider engaging the congregation with a smile and gesture? Is the music leader leading song with authority and inviting and encouraging full participation, giving people permission to sing? Is the word well rehearsed and, print and presented? Some readings are very dramatic and may need to be broken up into scripts read by a couple of people. Others are not dramatic at all, like the beginnings of the epistles. That often happens in the lectionary. What do you do with that? Why not have a high schooler approach the AMBO with her laptop or her device and say, I'm going to check email. And then she looks up to the congregation and says, a reading from Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. If applicable, is there ASL translation or foreign language translation available? When we get to the offertory, is it clear that the gifts of bread and wine and money and music are all being offered simultaneously, each of them signifying us placing ourselves on the altar. A well-crafted rubric can get this point across easily. As people are invited to come forward, is there a clear indication of how to approach and receive? Is the bread really bread? One child I know of refused to go to communion because in her words, it tasted like paper. Is there a gluten-free alternative offered or better yet, have you discovered Pamela's gluten-free bread mix? It's available on Amazon. Is there non-alcoholic alternative for those who wish not to receive wine? And when we get to the, what I call sending an afterglow, will the people feel set out with joy and energy? Will they know where the coffee hour is? And maybe uh, will they need a shepherd to bring them around into the space and introduce them to people? Will they want to return next week with other guests? The last bit of vesting the church is the follow-up. If they have filled out a visitor card, will they receive a call or a letter within a few days? One congregation I know sends out individuals to present a loaf of chocolate zucchini bread and a church calendar, calendar to the visitors who came on Sunday. It provides them with the opportunity to then 
ask a few questions, and make deeper connection if they wish. In providing a well-vested church, we offer our best hospitality to all who come our way. And through it all, we might just teach ourselves something.